Hello, pagans and non-pagans. It's me again. This video will cover the spell work that causes so much trouble and confusion. Love spells. And why they are so prone to backfire. Let's first look at why people cast love spells. The usual reason is because they are lonely or horny or both. Some cast love spells simply for sex while others seek companionship. I'm sure you've all heard the horror stories about the girl who cast a love spell and got stalkers or worse. These stories are rampant, and I'm sure some of them may even be true. So we need to look at why these kind of things happen and how to prevent them in the future. I will start by saying that if something bad happens to you after casting a love spell, it does not automatically mean that it was your fault or the spell backfired. There are external forces and just random bad luck that can befall anyone at any time, but why, with, but why risk increasing those chances by not knowing what you are doing in your spell work? I hope to shed some light on how to prevent that. There are usually two I'm sorry. There are usually two reasons why a love spell does not work. The first being that it was not meant to be at this particular time or you screwed it up. Love spells are the most difficult spell to create and cast because of all the emotion, hormones, secret desires, and insecurity, insecurities we humans have. Most of us were at one time Christian and through that religion and society in general, we were told that sex is bad and evil. Even though we know it is not, that seed is still buried deep in many people's subconscious. You add to that the negative body image and other securities many carry around within themselves, it's no wonder that these spells fail or go awry so often. Remember, spells work off of what your true intent is. Meaning, what is it you really want? not what you say. Those who wish to cast a love spell should look long and hard at how they really feel about themselves before doing the spell work. Do you think that you don't deserve to be treated with respect? If that's the case, guess what you're going to attract in life and through your spell work? You have people who won't treat you with respect. We all know the girl who sits around complaining about how all men are horrible because every man she dated cheated on her, then dumped her, or the guy who complains about how all women are crazy and do not respect him. Well, there is a saying I once heard, and it pretty much sums this up. If you're on your third divorce, maybe it's you. So if your last five boyfriends cheated on you, maybe it's you. If every single girlfriend you've ever had has not respected you, maybe it's you. No one deserves to be treated that way, and if it keeps happening to you, look at yourself. Why do you keep picking these people? What is it you're projecting that attracts them? Because the overwhelming majority of people are not like this, and why do they keep coming to you? Now, in my opinion, the worst of these emotional issues are low self-esteem and self-loathing. These are the ones that get in the way of, of uh, crafting a proper love spell. They do the most damage to a person's self-image, which manifests itself in many ways in their life. Very few people actually deserve to have a low self-esteem. Those who have it develop it over years from stimuli in their environment. People telling them they are worthless and not good enough. Well, I have to tell you this, it's a bunch of bullshit. Every human being has value and has something to contribute to society, and anyone who tells you different is not worth listening to. Every person is important to someone and worthy of love. This also applies to those who are self-loathing. Society tells them they are less than human. You're too fat. 
you're ugly, you're the wrong race, you're gay, and so on. What I said earlier also applies here as well. Every human being, with the exception of the truly evil and disgusting, deserves love and should have self-respect. Anything less is a tragedy. Listen to me closely and remember this. You are the one who holds yourself back from loving yourself. No one else can. And if you can't love yourself, then how do you expect anyone to love you? You're the one in control. Now, once you have examined yourself and overcome those issues that hold you back, it's now time to figure out what you are really looking for. Do you want a short romance? A long-term one? Maybe with marriage? Or whatever. Once you know, you will need to craft a spell to fit that desire. The best way to do that would be to set up the spell that allows you to meet the person is most compatible with your wants. That way you don't overlook someone who really who will really make you happy. You might want to generalize it too. Instead of saying, I want someone who looks like Brad Pitt, say, I want someone who's attractive. Because there could be someone who doesn't look like Brad Pitt, but drop dead gorgeous, but you've just eliminated him from the poll because you're fixated with Brad Pitt. That's just an example. Now, the actual type of magic you use is up to you. Candle magic, poppets, or traditional spell work will be fine. Doesn't matter. It's intent, remember? Whatever you're comfortable with doing, that's what's important. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Now, I won't write a spell for you. I don't do that. I don't believe in doing that. But if you have any questions or you're stuck, I'm more than willing to point you in the right direction. And that's all i got to say for now. Um, if I get enough questions or whatever, if, this, if I left something hanging, let me know and I'll do a follow-up video. Anyway... Farewell for now, everyone, and blessed be.